All right, Tammy, looking at a little sunshine there. And you know, really, when we think of kids out there being sick, we think of all the cold weather and the running noses and uh, kids staying home from school. You get the drill. Parents know what I'm talking about. But the summertime, uh, truth be told, also brings a list of ailments that we truly need to watch out for. And joining us live right now is Dr. Shelley V. Flace of the Northwestern University Feinberg School of Medicine at Lurie Children's Hospital. She's also, she's an author. She is co-editor of the Big Book of Symptoms. So you're here to help us out, parents uh, paying attention. Glad to have you. Thank Good you for to see having you. me. Okay, again, I, I'm a parent, uh, I, and the kids, they do. They, they, this is not running down. Your, it's like a collision sport, just trying to make sure you keep their noses dry. Um, you have a, a list for us of five symptoms that parents during the summertime, or really, I guess, anytime, should be watching out for. Can you walk us through these? That's right. Well, and certainly, um, our new book from the American Academy of Pediatrics, it's called The Big Book of Symptoms, and it's meant to supplant your relationship with your pediatrician, because, of course, no book or resource can replace place that relationship that you have with your doctor. The American Academy of Pediatrics actually recommends a medical home, meaning that families bring their children in for regular checkups and have an established no relationship with their doctor. This book is to serve as um, a nice resource at home to help families look up certain kind of issues. Guide to keep it here. And in summertime, there are different issues, but still kids are getting sick, kids, kids are getting fevers, and probably fevers the number one issue for parents. A lot of, we actually call it fever phobia um, because in the older child who's generally healthy, a fever is a good sign. It's a sign that your immune system is working. We're all kind of set to a certain thermostat and when we fight infection or viruses, um, it kind of revs up our immune system and certain factors work better at those temperatures. So fever's one, what else on the other five? Uh, bites, bites. The mosquito bites. I'm seeing a ton of mosquito bites and yeah, unfortunately as the summer progresses, we get in the early fall, we'll see more um, yellow jackets and honeybee stings. Um, but certainly a lot of um, families worry about mosquito bites because there can be a strong localized reaction to that. Usually calamine lotion, Benadryl, ice does the trick. It is a break in the barrier of the skin, however. So if you see signs of infection, which includes tenderness, increasing redness, instead of improvement over the next 24 hours, actually getting worse, those are signs it could be infected. That would be a reason to go see your pediatrician. And finally, briefly, only have a little time time here. A sunburn's a big problem for, for kids in the uh, summertime. Tell it us what, what kids can do and what parents should do to help. Well, number one is prevention, absolutely. And either short-run sunburns or long-term consequences of sun exposure, parents should look for broad-spectrum UVA and UVB protection. Um, what we're trying to do here is prevent the long-term consequences. Some kiddos have sensitive skin and react to the sunscreens that absorb a little bit more, like your typical drugstore brands. Those families should look for a zinc oxide-based sunscreen. It's more of a barrier, gentler on skin, less absorption is going on, tons of protection. All right, great insight. Dr. Shelley Flace, really appreciate it. One more time, we got the book here. Yes, that's right. What's Big Book of Symptoms from the American Academy of Pediatrics. All right, uh, uh, a hand guy to keep it home to help you out. <laughs> All right, uh, we're going to have more Good Day Chicago coming up right after this break. Appreciate your time.